Hi, welcome to this new video about the Culture Heritage Manager. After a brief introduction to this topic, we will look at some of the main definitions. Then at the risk management cycle. Finally, we will try to individuate which are the main characteristics of a Culture Heritage Manager profile. And finally, draw some conclusions. First of all, the results presented in this video are uh, were all produced uh, within the framework of the Charisma project. And from the analysis carried out, it, it was it was it was clear how different scenarios are involved in the uh, management of the risk management of cultural heritage and also there is a wide range of skills competences and responsibilities that the risk manager should ideally possess however it is important to highlight the fact that the results uh, provide a very clear image and a snapshot of the heterogeneity of perspectives to this topic. And this stems out really to the nature of the project partnership itself, where different um, different expertises are, 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 are included. Let's look at some of the relevant definitions. First of all, skill. So skill is simply said the ability to use our knowledge effectively in relation to the execution or, or, or to the performance of an action. Competence. Competence is the quality or state of having sufficient knowledge, judgment, skill, or strength. Finally, responsibility. It is, defined, it is defined as the quality or state of being responsible. All the definitions uh, presented here are from the Merriam-Webster online uh, dictionary. So let's look at risk management and at its most important steps. So we can imagine risk management as a cycle. So it starts from um, the step which is called identify. So identify the risks, then assess and analyze the risks. This is the second step. Third step is the action. So develop some actions that can help reducing or mitigating the risks. The next step is the implementation of the action. And finally, control and monitor the actions in a way to go back to identification step in which we will identify which risks are still in place even after the action has been implemented. So this is a very important to understand um, this, the basics of, of, the, of the whole management, to understand each of the step and also to understand and clarify which are the tasks belonging to each of the step. So the risk management basically involves the identification of potential risks and taking strategic actions to mitigate those risks. Looking at the cultural heritage manager profile, we can say that there are this is it is characterized by three overlying risk skills, three fundamental responsibilities, 
and four potential challenges. As, as, as I said previously, of course, these results, these results uh, derive from the uh, analysis and the survey carried out in the Charisma project, and of course, reflect um, reflect the responses that that we received. So, in this slide, we have a map of how the cultural heritage manager um, profile should look like. Let's go more into the details. Which are the skills that a manager should have? First of all, manager, cultural heritage risk managers should understand risk and risk evaluation procedures. Of course, this is uh, the basic and that's why the risk management cycle is so important. Secondly, is the awareness of cultural heritage vulnerabilities. So the cultural heritage manager should also possess some understanding of, uh, of cultural heritage, uh, its uh, weaknesses, and which are the possible risks and values that are at risk. And finally, the third skill is the communication and dissemination. Of course, the manager should be able to uh, have a, a perfect uh, communication and dissemination skill with all the stakeholders and bring on board um, everyone and make sure that the cycle runs smoothly. Let's look at the responsibilities. So the first responsibility, of course, we said that the nature of cultural heritage risk management is multidisciplinary and multidimensional one. And this um, imposes the necessity to individuate a person in charge of coordinating the management process and individual task. Of course, this is a very basic responsibility. The risk manager, it is uh, the person that um, works uh, as a reference uh, person for all the stakeholders and try to manage the different tasks. Second responsibility, of course, again, the manager should facilitate their participation. So it's not only about coordinating the tasks within the, uh, um, uh, the partnership, but it is also to bring on board all the necessary stakeholders and facilitating uh, actually the participation of both experts users but as well as lay users so non-expert uh, engage the, um, the 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 society engage the final user of the cultural heritage engage uh, maybe owners or or managers that not necessarily are experts in, uh, in development of uh, appropriate resilience building strategies. Third the responsibility, the, um, the risk manager is responsible for fostering the liaison among the stakeholders active in the risk management process. Finally, let's look at the challenges. Of course, the main challenges for the risk management are, are those that are uh, very much related to, to, to the nature, intrinsic somehow to, to uh, the management of cultural heritage. So usually it's the lack of funds, lack of awareness, lack of data. Moreover, the manager should look at possible conflicts within the management team and should uh, implement contingency plans for addressing this, this uh, the, the conflicts. So this is a, a very important challenge. Finally, concluding, we can say that the manager of cultural uh, culture, uh, heritage should develop plans um, with the intent to minimize and mitigate negative outcomes 
through a combination of project management and proposal development. Finally, which are the benefits um, of having a cultural heritage risk manager? So first of all, risk management plans, having a manager dedicated to cultural heritage will have tailored protection strategies and plans in place. And this is very important. And this is something that usually uh, does not exist in, in, in cultural heritage management. So have specifically tailored strategies. Then another benefit is the understanding of the roles among the stakeholders and channel the communication flow toward a uh, correct um, uh, personnel use units. So this is this is very important. Management of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, risk cycle. Then another benefit is the therefore um, the optimized use of resources. So having a manager, of course, optimizes how human resources and also all sorts of other resources uh, are, are used. And finally, the benefit is the implementation of appropriate conservation measures. So, of course, having a, a specific manager for cultural heritage means having a more appropriate uh, conservation measure in place. Thank you again for your attention.